Hi, and welcome to Treat Your Own Back. We are here in Wellington, New Zealand with Robin McKenzie, the author of the best-selling self-help book, Treat Your Own Back. Robin, you wrote Treat Your Own Back first in 1980. The book has been sold in the millions around the world. Lots of patients benefited from it. You treated in your career over 35,000 patients. What has led you to originally develop the method and believing that a patient can treat their own pain? It was not the result of me deciding to change the way backs were treated. It resulted from a chance observation uh, which led me to uh, identify certain movements and positions that patients can get into which causes their problem. And if we understand things properly, we can also teach them movements and positions that reverse that process. Now, I then learned over time that uh, also from a chance event, that the patient himself can apply the movements that are required to reverse displacement or distortion of the joint. Robin, there's still a lot of professionals around the world that advocate hands-on technique, such as mobilization, manipulation, as well as passive modalities, such as electrical stimulation, ultrasound, heat, for lower back pain. What has been your experience over the years with passive modalities and passive treatments for the patient? With regard to the mobilization and manipulation, uh, those do have a part to play, those maneuvers, but we shouldn't be dispensing those maneuvers to the whole population in order to give it to the very few who need it. Because some manipulators manipulative physiotherapists, chiropractors, osteopaths, you see them and they give you manipulation. That's expected. But the same results can be achieved in the great majority of patients. I would say 90% of patients do not need those mechanical uh, forces applied by others. They can recover using their own movements and understanding. For the first 10 or 15 years, I realized that uh, it didn't seem to make much difference whether you put heat or cold or ultrasound or shortwave diathermy or any electrical gadgetry. It didn't really seem to make a dramatic difference. But um, we now know that they have no effect. They now have no beneficial effect. None of these things have any beneficial effect for the patient at all. And it should be a crime to continue to use them. Um, but the authorities do not uh, consider it necessary to stop their treatment, to stop the delivery of these treatments. Mm -hmm. One of the things, Robin, you said is that the patient, once the patient learns how to treat themselves, they can duplicate the treatment throughout the day, where if they are spending time with the therapist for 45 minutes to an hour, there is still 23 hours in the day that they need to know in what positions they need to be in. One of them is good support of the lower back, position of good uh, posture while you're sitting. What is the benefit of a good lumbar support or maintaining the <coughs> lumbar lordosis? Well, if you take the example of the, the, the office worker who sits all day at a computer, you take the, the the instance of a, uh, a carpenter, a plumber, an electrician, or a laborer who's bending all day. They bend all day and strain the back. If I bend my finger back like that and hold it there, it becomes painful. And uh, I realize that that's a, a dumb thing to do. So you stop doing it and the pain goes away. Pain. No pain. So there's nothing really wrong with the structure, but the average person finishes the day's work sitting or working in a flexed position, and then the worst thing they can do is to go home at night and 
sits slouched in a chair and the problem is perpetuated. The overstretching continues when the patient slouches like this. So we have to have some way of correcting sitting posture because it is, it is the number one predisposing factor in the causes of back pain, in my opinion. And I think the evidence is mounting that that is so. So the hollow we have in our back when we stand is destroyed if you slouch. Mm -hmm. So we have to have build in a lumbar support that retains the hollow in the back when you sit. Now if one does not have a lumbar row or one finds himself or herself in a position where they find that there is more pain the longer they sit, what exercise did you find over the years has been the most beneficial in restoring the lordosis while the patient sits, restoring that curvature in the lower back? Well, the best way to teach the patient is to sit them in a bad position, slouched, so that the pain comes on. Mm -hmm. And then you bring them up like this and ask what happens to the pain most most, but not all. Most patients will say, oh, I don't have the pain in this position. So you can teach the person, the patient with low back pain, to practice this, go down and come up, go down and come up, and they will learn that pain, no pain. Pain, no pain. And they have a tool now to deal with it themselves. That's under their control. It's the patient's responsibility to apply the education that we give them. And if they don't, it's their own fault. Mm -hmm. Robin, in the DVD, we're presenting both extension and flexion exercises. Unfortunately, over the years, a lot of people associated McKenzie with just extension exercises. However, there is an important component of flexion exercises. When will it be appropriate for a patient to introduce flexion? Let me give you the example. If I put a deep cut across the knuckle, mm -hmm. nice deep cut, and you flex, bend, every day the wound opens. Mm -hmm. But if you keep it tight and straight, good posture, it heals up. Mm -hmm. You must avoid doing that because it opens the wound. You keep it like that and it heals up nicely. And once it's healed, you can do that. Mm -hmm. So it's the same with the back. You keep the back hollow to allow healing and repair. And once that has occurred, then you can flex. And it's important that the patient learns to flex later Mm -hmm. in the later stages of the problem but the early stages extension is the best bending backwards or sitting correctly is vital mm -hmm. once that's been achieved then you recover the function by flexing the patient in a controlled manner mm -hmm. Robin the book treat your own back that you wrote in the 80s is based on a chance discovery what has led you to believe and to know that a patient can truly achieve resolution of back pain with their own forces and positions. In those days we were taught at the physiotherapy school that uh, flexion exercises are the most important thing. On this particular occasion a patient came to me who had had symptoms for uh, I think six weeks. He, he, we, when we started treating him he had the symptoms for three weeks. And we used to give him ultrasound and heat. And at the end of that time, he was, the end of this, another three weeks of treatment, he was no better. And one, on one occasion, he came into the treatment uh, for his treatment. And the, the treatment table had been left with the end raised. And this patient, who wasn't a brilliant scholar, I said, go into that room, Mr. Smith, but I can't remember his name. Go into that room, Mr. Smith, lie face down on the table. So he took me literally, went into the room, head up here, 
feet down here, back arched backwards. And I didn't know he'd done this. When I went into the room five minutes later, I thought, oh my God, that's just the worst possible thing he could do. And I said, um, how are you feeling, Mr. Smith? And he turned around and he said, this is the best I've been for six weeks. Well, the best I've been for three weeks, he said. Uh, in what way are you better? He says, all the pain has gone out of my leg. It's right in the middle of my back. And I thought, ah, oh, right, okay. Right, well, that's probably long enough, Mr. Smith. <laughs> um, stand up, move around. Stood up. How are you feeling? It's gone out of my leg. I thought, right, okay, come back tomorrow and we'll do it again. And uh, he came back the next day. He was so much better, he couldn't believe it, and I couldn't believe it. And I then thought to myself, if, that's, if that is what I have seen, is, is that's correct, everything we were taught might be wrong. So every, from then on, every patient I got, come in here, lie in this position, and uh, I found two or three interesting things. They could get rapidly better, they could get slowly better, or they could get worse. And after a lot of experimentation, and I sent one or two people to hospital in the process, um, <laughs> I found that uh, I devised and considered everything, and I worked it out that there was a time when the patient must extend, a time when they have to flex, and uh, once you have learned the system, it's quite easy to work out how to do that. So, Mr. Smith, I call him, um, uh, taught me that if you can move the patient's pain out of the limb, arm or leg, and put it in the middle of the back, or near the middle of the back, you're moving the patient in the right direction. And if the other thing happens, if the pain gets further into the limb, or increases in intensity in the limb, it's the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it really is uh, um, not a difficult concept to grasp. Mm -hmm. But it's been made difficult because uh, a lot of people don't like to see the mystique of manipulation and mobilization um, abandoned. They want to keep holding on to the skill that they've spent years learning. Mm -hmm. uh, and so a lot of people do not like the idea that patients could treat themselves. Mm -hmm. I am waging a battle for the um, adoption, routine adoption of a mechanical assessment in mechanical diagnosis and therapy before a patient gets near the knife. Because when they've had surgery, it's a real injury. Mm -hmm. They've really suffered an injury. I once was uh, invited to speak at the American Orthopaedic Association annual meeting and there were 2,000 orthopaedic surgeons there. Um, and I explained the theory and I explained what happens to patients' pain if you move them in certain ways. And um, I was attacked vigorously by one surgeon who said, Mr. McKenzie, we orthopaedic surgeons have been inside the joint and we've seen what happens and it doesn't do what you say it does. And I, of course, I was mortified. I thought, oh my God, oh dear. How am I going to uh, counter this? Uh, and I didn't have a very successful counter. I, I, I now know, of course, what, what the answer should have been, but um, I didn't give it at that time. And uh, I've, when the session closed, I went up to my room and there was another orthopedic surgeon in the, in the lift with me, in the elevator. And uh, he said to me, Mr. McKenzie, he said, as I understand it, um, you can take the pain out of the patient's leg and put it in his back. And I said, yes, that's very common. He says, that means that they're no longer a surgical candidate. Yes, you could say that. 
Some people ain't going to like that, he said. The idea that um, because the patient has pain in the leg, that they are a surgical candidate and need surgery is nonsense, absolute nonsense. A large percentage of patients who have uh, sciatica are rapidly reversible if the right movements are uh, performed on them. And so no patient should ever consider surgery for the spine unless they have previously had uh, a, an extensive examination and assessment by a person trained in mechanical diagnosis and therapy, which is MDT abbreviated, which is the system that I have developed. It's now practiced worldwide in th hundreds of countries, dozens of countries, and if the pain can be moved without surgery, out of the leg, um, that's a tremendous step forward. Its, uh, its importance is underestimated, underrated, undervalued, and certainly not considered a good option by orthopedic surgeons. The surgical rate in the United States especially is, is appallingly high mm -hmm. for back pain and leg pain, sciatica. Is there a specific exercise that a patient needs to do or not to do if there's a bulging disc on an MRI or should a mechanical assessment be the driving force behind getting the patient better? Yes, you, you got it right in the end. Okay. The, uh, there should be a mechanical assessment. But the first thing to do is throw the MRI away. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, they tell lies. They're not always correct. Mm -hmm. What they show is probably correct, but is that the joint that's causing the problem? Mm -hmm. Throw the MRIs away and put the patient through a real uh, uh, structured mechanical evaluation. Mm -hmm. Repeat movements, repeat movements, and repeat movements. What is the effect on your pain? Because if you move them once, it'll probably hurt. And they, oh, don't do that. But if you keep repeating the movement, you may find that the pain changes or moves from one place to another or stops. And so if you're going to operate on a patient because of the MRI and you haven't done this, you, you, it's, it's a crime, mm -hmm. punishable by deregistration. Now, if the pain moves from the leg into the back, Yes. And the patient comes and see a McKenzie therapist. Yes. Is that considered, or they start the exercise program we're presenting in this DVD. They start the exercise program with leg pain and they're developing back pain. Is that what you call centralization and, in, and is that a good thing? Yes. If you perform movements that cause the pain to go from the leg to the back mm -hmm. or move from the... Uh, side of the back to the middle, the patient is doing the right exercise. Mm -hmm. It's predictive of good outcome. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a, the foundation of um, prognosis, identifying what the patient should be doing to get better with good reliable evidence now to show that if the patient's symptoms centralise almost certain to have a good outcome. Is it safe to treat back pain without an MRI? It's, a, it's vital that um, a simple mechanical evaluation can be applied to almost every patient who is showing symptoms of back pain. If they're ideally suited, they will get rapidly better. If they are partially responsive to start with, they will, be a, a good, they will get a good result, but it will take longer. Anyone who is unsuitable will get symptoms that increase in intensity, will go further into the leg, they will peripheralize, or they will uh, get so much pain that you can't continue. Robin, we're presenting in this DVD exercises that you devised over your career. How does the patient know it is safe to start 
this kind of exercise program. The, the idea is that anyone can start doing the exercises. As long as the pain gets centralised, reduces in intensity or changes location. If the pain is getting less and less and less with repetition, or if the pain is moving to the middle of the back, it is safe to do the exercises. But if in doubt, they should see a, 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 cl a clinician trained in the McKenzie system, or if they are really concerned, they should consider